I'm pretty partial to Kershaw's Lee Williams flipper designs. On the table is the Energy 1740, reviewed here in the Nut and Fancy Project, July 2008. One of my favorite EDC blades, the 1740. Not the lightest, but it's fun and it's almost automatic in its speed of deployment. I have in my hands my sidebar description I wrote way back in 08, and it's going to play for setting the stage of the 1745, which I'm going to do a mini review on right now. Some improvements have been made, and now it warrants a review and recommendation here in TMP. Here's what I said back in 08. This is an innovative and cool EDC knife. I'm talking about the 1740 on the table. Made of Sandvik 13C26 steel, since changed 14C28 in. The blade is perfectly sized and shaped for EDC tasks. Yep, it is. Blade deployment is fast, fast and sure with an integral flipper design that operates smoothly and provides authoritative deployment. The gray G10 scales on this model are well executed, provide a sure grip, as does the jimping. Imagine that, jimping an EDC blade, thank you. On the blade, the clip is kind of goofy and overly wide, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll see that hasn't changed unfortunately and mounted too low on the handle but it is strong and functional these G10 scales are handsome and comfortable however I would like to see them made thinner as well as some lightning holes in the liners to save a few half ounces here or there still at 2.2 ounces this energy is very pocketable and a breeze to carry one downside is the goofy oh, I'm double I need to go edit that I guess I have that twice the Kershaw Energy comes in two versions, a small 1740 and the larger 1745. Yeah, I got a Band-Aid. Deal with it. I sold the 1745 as I felt it was a bit too chunky and heavy, maybe a lot heavy, for the price, and I prefer this smaller 1740 EDC version. I never reviewed the 1745 because I disliked it so much. It was a lot chunkier and a lot heavier than this. Uh, I wish I had a picture, or I would have taken a picture before I pitched it. It looked just like this one, but it had fat handle scales. I'm happy to report that I guess Kershaw watched that video, and they made the changes recommended. Wasn't a great deployment. Let me work on that. Here we go. Uh, still sucked at it. That's the 1745 BLK blackened version. Now recommended here in TMP, and... For the reasons I'm going to tell you just really quickly, one is it inherits that beautiful clip hollow ground blade. Now, like I said in the intro, 14C28N. Fine grain steel, better rust resistance. I love the edge I can get on a 14, 1428 blade. Improvements made that make it attractive to me is it's lighter. Actually, quite a bit lighter. I don't remember offhand what the original energy was. I didn't have it written down. I think it was 5+. plus. For a knife this size, I just wasn't interested. For this particular design. It's funny how each design, for me, you know, I may let the weight issue go. It just depends what the knife is. depends what the blade shape is. But if we look inside, check this. Prion 2, illuminating duties. Totally milled out as recommended here in TMP. I mean, we're talking aggressive milling. They have skeletonized those liners without sacrificing any strength whatsoever in the 1745. Well done. Now it's wearing thinner G10 scales too. That was another criticism I had. That they had those big old fat scales on it and it was just a chunk in the pocket, which I don't like. I like thin carry blades. Sidetail backspacer still that still there. Medium traction G10 in the 1745. Still a liner lock, just like the 1740, and it's a strong lockup. Still not getting a super fast deployment. Tripod in the way, that's my excuse. You can see the lock up there. Decent phosphor bronze bushings inside. Huh. Still got that goofy clip, I guess. When I talk about Wizard of Oz issues on a clip, this is the kind of clip I'm talking about. Straight out of the movie Wizard of Oz. It's just goofy. Uh, and it's mounted too low on the handle. That will be a hit on the 1745. Uh, I just hate the clip. Sorry. 
At least it carries tip up. I like that, and it is positionable. Not on both sides, but you can go tip down with this if you want. For the philosophy of use on this video, I'm actually going to add tactical use for the 1745. That is emergency defensive because it does have jimping. And it's sharp. At least on the blade. Here, eh, not so much. But on here, even though it's a short run, you have kind of a moderate finger choil right there. In conjunction with that, medium traction G10. Yeah, I'll do that. Mostly EDC on this blade. That's black tie eye coated blade. I love it. There's the blade markings right there. This is my favorite version, the black on black with this. I don't know why the clip isn't blackened. To me, that's just kind of a thematic miss. No other surprises here. I mean, the handle, the pivot screws, all the stuff I talked about in the 1740 review, now that's changed. The blade shape is, again, I'll rave about that. I just love it. It's just so functional. Well done. Pricing on the 1745, and I'm just kind of jumping all over the map here, just doing a mini review for you guys. Getting the information out about, I don't even know if I have it written down. I think around 50-ish is what you'll pay. It might be more. I'll annotate it. Usually it's USA produced, by the way, the 1745 featuring that 14C28 in steel again. Uh, let me throw out a, just a couple competitive options for you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. And these are just, seriously, just pulled out of the knife drawer. Interesting, by the way, is that I keep some of the blades that I'm really not super fond of here in TMP. So they can function as cast members, yeah, for the review. So they can come out and do some comparison and contrast. It's interesting. Not that the blades I'm going to show you now are that way at all. Um, I like all the blades. How about this? Kara Kara G10 by Bird, Spider Co. 8CR 13 MOV. About the same weight of this knife. Flat ground, great relief edge, wicked sharp. That's an option. Doesn't have near the classiness of this does. Not even close. Here's one. Asset, 1930, it's 4.2 ounces, I think around $22 is all. Overseas produced knife, 8CR 13 MOV, beautiful sweeping blade shape, almost Persian in nature. I love, I love the, the shape of this knife. Granted, it has the same materials we were talking about in, in a couple other reviews, Zytel handles, still like that knife. Not as much class, and actually in a way kind of a a different price point same with this one I just reviewed this in the China versus USA video finally found my straight edge compound 1948 CR 13 MOV 4.2 ounces about $21 it's great EDC blade high value I misspoke in that review by the way that's not G10 that's Zytel textured Zytel textured still hate it it's a good option there you guys might dig this. I'll give you an inside look at what goes on behind the scenes in this video. This is a crew knife I made. Ontario Rat 1. Duracoated by Mission Spec Camo. Contrasting. This is number 4 of 4. Crew only. Just left the standard pretty much Teflon coated blade on there which wears off. But man is that a good looking color. Cav Arms Blue I think is what I specified on that. That's a heavier knife though. It's going to be 5.2 ounces OS 8 steel. In this coloration uh, blows away all the knives on the table for coolness. Not even being a crew knife. Also functions as a prototype. I might do a run of these for the Nut and Fancy project and price them as low as I possibly can. Let me know if you'd like that. There you go man. 1745 is an awesome blade. The only miss really is the clip and I can actually live with that now with the other improvements. It's a gorgeous blade. It's fast deploying, solid lockup, comfortable in hand, classy. If you blacken that clip it'll be better. That's a nothing fancy mini review under 10 minutes. See ya!